Hey, welcome back to the book of Philippians this morning. We're going to take our devotional time at chapter 2 and verse 16, and it kind of follows on from verse 14 and 15. Let's live above this crooked generation, and let's hear what it says at verse 16, then we'll think about it together. Holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Now, that word is an interesting word. Vain there, the word there means empty, that I haven't worked for empty things or I haven't labored for things that turned into nothingness. And Paul says, I've worked hard for the kingdom. You're part of the result. You're part of the out, outflow from that. And I didn't work so that it would come to nothing. Let's, let's work together with the Lord, with our King Jesus, and see the fruit of that for the kingdom. So verse 16 says, holding fast the word of life. That's the first thing. How can we ever have any success in soul winning, any success in personal spiritual growth if we're not coming from the word of life? How could we? We really couldn't. We could have just fitful uh, bursts of, of energy, mostly human nervous energy. We wouldn't be transformed. So we need God's supernatural energy working in us. That's going to mean in verse 16, we need to start by holding on tight to the word of life. And so that's the first thing. Paul says, so that I can rejoice in the day of Christ. There's a day of judgment coming. Paul will one day see the outcome of his, his work, the way that he worked with God to bring up the Philippian church. You and I, we will one day see the, the outcome of the work we've done, uh, working for souls in our neighborhood, in our own home, in our congregation where we worship. One day we'll see uh, how much fruit there is. Does it give glory to God or not? One day we'll see, just as Paul will one day see, and he says, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. He's talking about saying, wow, look at what those people did with the goodness of God working through them. Look what they did in that world. That such desperate and empty and needy world. Jesus gave life through their ministry. So we're going to look for that. And then we have so that he can rejoice that in that day of judgment that he didn't run in vain. He didn't labor in vain. You know, we sometimes look around and we say, well, I can't really tell what's happening. This isn't like a class where, you know, you put the people through the class, they, they work through, they take the test, and at the end, you know, they've got an A or a B or a C. And you can say, yeah, I had this many A students, I had this many B students. The work of the gospel, friend, we really don't know for certain the outcome until the day of judgment comes, right? So we just work for the Lord joyfully. We just do the, the kingdom. We just do the things of the gospel, and God will take care of the rest. So one day we'll, we'll see, you know, the outcome. And that's what we're looking at here is Paul is anxious to see the beautiful outcome in the city of Philippi. May you and I uh, also team with God and see the outcome in the beautiful city where you live. Let's pray about that. Dear Father in heaven, each person that's uh, viewing this uh, presentation, they all live somewhere. They're all in some location and they all want to serve you, and they want to do your will where they are, please, Lord, give them help. Show them your work for them and that part of your vineyard where they are. Build up your people, Lord. Build up your church. May there be much fruit in the kingdom, and may we rejoice one day when we see it. Sometimes we look out and we're not too sure. We don't need to be sure. What we need to do is be faithful. You'll take care of the rest. Thank you for Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And that's just it. You and I, be faithful today. God will take care of all the rest. Let's just be faithful and point people to Jesus, and we'll rejoice one day very soon. God be with you.